Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, blast it, just when we were settled down. Who do you think it is? I hope it isn't anybody. You mean you hope it's nobody? Yes, I guess so. I'm in the middle of a darn. In that case, why don't you just let it ring? We'll act as if we're out. That would be dishonest. I'm going. Now, come back here now. What's dishonest about it? Our door. Let's let it ring his head off. It might be opportunity ringing. Opportunity knocks. If we don't answer it now, whoever it is will go away. Good, good. David, it's like not answering the phone. Only worse because it can't be a wrong number. Well, force yourself, darling. Teach you some discipline. I don't want discipline. I just want to know who it is. I'm going. You are a weak-minded bride. All right, I'm weak-minded and I'm proud of it. Nobody there. Who was it? Now, you see, they went away. You beast. Now we'll never know. <laughs> Good. Come on, sit down. Mm. We'll resume our peace and quiet. You may be able to resume it, but I won't. I'm on pins and needles. Fine. You can use them on my socks. You really can forget all about it. That doorbell's going to ring in my head all night. Put on earmuffs. Oh, Dave. Now, let's see. What, what page was I on? Hmm. Here we are. This is a fascinating book on architecture and concrete. Oh? I want to get it read by morning. Oh, David. Hmm? Are we always going to be happy like this? We are. You know, marriage is easy. You think so? Mm-hmm. All you have to do is love the person you're married to. That's only the first thing and the easiest. I suppose love is to marriage what the solid foundation of a building is to the rest of it. Yep, that's it. But, David, that sounds so much less exciting than it really is. Oh, I think it's very exciting. Because when it's all built up, you've really got yourself something. Our house has a terrific foundation, hasn't it? Colossal, colossal. Well, come on, Shakespeare. Let's darn some more socks. And don't purr so loud. Mr. Norton wants to read about cement. Shh. Oh, quiet again. Hmm? The doorbell. What doorbell? The front doorbell. Come on, we'll go together. Come back here. You're imagining things. What? No doorbell rang. But it did. Must be ringing in your head. You got wheels in your head, like you said it would. What are you talking about? You mean you really didn't hear it? I didn't hear a thing, really didn't. Oh, you're fooling. You good for nothing. Fooling? Darling, you're fooling me. You really didn't hear the bells, did you? Of course I did. David. Hmm? You know, you can make a person crazy saying things like that. Well, I don't have to work very hard, I know. I suppose you think you heard that bell. Oh, you. Come on, Shakespeare, we've had enough discipline. And if it isn't anyone there, it's spook. There won't be, it's spooks. <laughs> Why, Fritz, you're the spooks. Yeah, it is me. Good evening, Mrs. Norton. Hello, Good Fritz. Evening. Good evening, Mr. Norton. Fritz. Say, did you come up and ring earlier? Yeah, I, I thought you was out. We weren't, but when we got to the door, you'd gone. Oh, what a relief to know who it was. <laughs> I don't think Mrs. Norton would have slept a wink if you hadn't come back, Fritz. <laughs> I would not have slept a wink, neither. <laughs> Fritz, what is it? Is Bertha all right? Oh, no, no, Bertha, she is fine. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> and, and for a second, I must tell you, we both so enjoyed the opera last oh, night. Oh, don't thank us, Fritz. Uh, Fritz, you can go in my place any old time. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, I have something important to tell you now. Uh, I do not disturb you and Mr. Norton at this hour, but uh, it is important. Oh, come inside, Fritz. We'll sit down in the living room. No, no, no. I, I tell you, here, it's faster. Uh, uh, Mrs. Norton, uh, you would like an apartment of your own, no? Would we? Our lease here is only for two months more, and I haven't found another thing. Yes, I know. A bear that tells me how you would like to have your, your own furniture and, and carpet. Oh, yes. 
But where are we going to find it? I think I find it for you. David, no, I really think I'm hearing things. No, I heard that, too. Uh, what do you mean, Fritz? You think you found one for us? Right here on, on the 12th floor. The 12th floor? Yeah, with, with the sun shining in the bedroom. And we paint it for you because you're a new tenant. And uh, they take with them everything. They leave you only the four walls uh, and the ceiling. David, now, pinch now, me, pinch me. Let's not get excited, darling. Let's, let's hear the whole story. I tell you everything. I am the superintendent, so I hear first they are moving. I, I hear this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mrs. Lee, she tells me her husband, uh, he has gotten sick and uh, they must go away by Monday. Uh, she gives me the apartment to rent. Uh, she has no time to bother. Yes. And I tell Bertha, and Bertha, she tells me to but, tell but, you. But things like this just don't happen. Not Chris. these days, anyway. Does Mrs. Lee have someone to uh, turn the apartment over to? Uh, she does not say so. Uh, she only said that I should ask if somebody wants it. Uh, she is uh, upstairs now. You mean we should go right up? Yeah, tonight. Uh, uh, but she asks only one person to come... Uh, because of her husband. Of course. David? No, darling, you go. Me? Yeah, it, it is better for Mrs. Norton, uh, you know, uh, another woman. Uh, the apartment is uh, 12C. Now, Fritz, Mrs. Norton and I don't know how to thank you for this. Oh, do not try. Uh, we will be glad, Bertha and me, that, that if you move, you do not move away from this building. Well, I, I go now and, and tell Bertha. We'll call you on the house phone, Fritz, as soon as I get down and tell you what happened. Uh, I will wait for the phone. You uh, want me to take you up? I love it. I'll leave the door on the latch. Uh, Claudia. Yep? We uh, really don't want this apartment, do we? David, are you crazy? I mean, we don't really care much, do we? Oh, oh, no. No. We don't care much. Well, that's no. what I thought, because mm. then it doesn't matter much. As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter at all. Hey, did I say that? You did. And I want you to remember, darling, we've been perfectly happy on the second floor, haven't we? Perfectly. Only I have missed the sun shining in the bedroom. And I do hate Mr. Tucker's furniture. And all the radiators spit and the faucets leak and... Oh, David, on the 12th floor we'll have an apartment with ceilings and, and sunshine and... Oh, nobody's left over furniture. Nice shopping to you, darling. Kiss me for luck. Kiss you for anything you want. Yes? Mrs. Lee, Fritz told me to come up. Oh, yes, Mrs. Norton, come in. Thank you. We'll have to be quiet. Would you rather I came back tomorrow? No, I'd like to get this settled, but I... I won't be able to show you either of the bedrooms. My husband is in one, and my little boy is asleep in the other. You have a little boy? Fritz didn't say that... He's seven. I suppose he's terribly excited about going away. Terribly. He's planning a beautiful mountain holiday, skating and sledding with his father. Oh... I haven't the heart to tell him. Seven is such a little boy. Have you any children? No, we're just married. Well, this is a nice apartment for children. One of the rooms faces south. You mean we really can have it? I don't care who lives here. We've been taken so by surprise, I... Of course, there's the matter of rent. We're paid up to... Mrs. Lee, why don't you let my husband settle it with Fritz? Then you won't have to bother. Yes. Yes, that's fine. Fritz knows all about it. We won't have any trouble. In a way, I'm, I'm glad Fritz sent you instead of somebody else. You have a long life ahead of you. This is a happy place to start it. My husband and I were only married six months when we moved in. When you're ready to come back here, Mrs. Lee, I, will you let us know? We won't come back. Not here. Don't wait for us. Don't, don't wait for anything, Mrs. Norton. Ever. I won't. Is there anything I could do to help you? Could I, I pack or clean no, or... I'll do it myself. It's better to keep busy. Well, then I'll, I'll go back downstairs and we'll make all the arrangements with Fritz. I wish I could have shown you around. Would you like to see the kitchen and the living room? They're a little messy, I'm afraid. I can see enough from here. 
feel as if I've intruded, is it? No. You've been very kind, very considerate. And starting Monday, the place is yours. Oh, yes. Y you can count on it. And thank you, Mrs. Lee. Thank you very much. I wish I knew what to say to you about your husband, but I, I don't. I mean, I, I know how awful it must be. Just wish us luck. I do, with all my heart. Is that you, dear? Yes, it's me. Well, how's the new tenant in 12C? Fine. You don't sound fine. What's the matter? Oh, darling, uh, now don't be disappointed. You said yourself things like this don't happen. We've been perfectly happy here. I, I never really expected it, to It's get... not that, David. We are the new tenants in 12C. The apartment's ours. It is? Mm-hmm. Well, you certainly had me fooled coming back looking as if you'd lost your best friend. It's ours? Ceiling, windows, sunshine, everything? With a fireplace in the living room. And what's the matter? Isn't it a nice apartment? I, I, I guess so. I didn't see much of it. David, her husband's awfully sick. Oh. So that's it. They have to leave for the mountains. Oh. I guess it must be his lungs. Oh, David, can things like that happen so suddenly? Anything can happen. Suddenly. A week ago, she never dreamt. And today... Oh, David, I I'm not sure I want the apartment now. Somehow it doesn't seem fair. I know what you mean. She has a little boy. She's not much older than we are, and yet she's so wonderful about it. So much more wonderful than I could ever be. She even says she's sure we're going to love the apartment. We are going to love it. And you stop feeling guilty. You mean it's all right for me to be so happy, in spite of her being so sad? You go right ahead and be happy. Are you? Yes. There's an extra room, David. There, there is, eh? What do we use it for? Oh, I have to think it over. What about the walls, David? What color are we going to paint them? Well, oh, we'll have to think that over, too. Say, we've got an awful lot of thinking to do. <laughs> and an awful lot of thanking, David. You bet. You know, an hour ago I was so happy I thought I'd bust. Now because I'm a little sad... In a way, I feel even happier. Does that make sense? Profound sense, darling. You too? Me too. Darling, do you think we're going to be six times as happy on the 12th floor as we've been on the 2nd? Wait and see. Oh, I wish it were now. I wish it were now. <laughs> All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. When guests say, don't go to a lot of trouble, they mean it. Folks enjoy hospitality more when it's effortless. That's one of the many blessings of ice-cold Coca-Cola. Not only is it delicious and refreshing, but serving it is the simplest, easiest form of hospitality you can offer. So keep it always on hand in your refrigerator. Buy it by the case and earn a well-deserved reputation for successful entertaining. Enjoy the pause that refreshes both hostess and guest. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>